Well, if this uh, Christmas was a kiddies program, which it's not, this would be what's called Fukushima time and uh, NRC time, where the Nuclear Regulatory Commission tries to twist the truth from the uh, former director of NRC, Jasco, with 60 reports coming back, they could change the danger level of reactors losing containment or melting down or melting through caused by an earthquake from cyber reports are coming back. Um, you've got lots of stuff to go over here, including the pleas from the people in Fukushima, um, TEPCO pleading for help. And uh, I read this report of what they're suggesting they might do, like putting water in reactor number one, two, and three. Uh, these are in the containment vessels. There's never been water in there, and they're leaking like sieves. This is like, I'm going to pour water through the sieve. Please catch the water on the other side of the sieve. This is not just inane. It's like the pleadings of an insane person. And, and I, I'm going to give a solution right now, but I want to hear your, your comments and go through all each of these papers and, and articles that you sent, uh, Chris. Okay, Dr. Bill. Yeah, uh, I guess, uh, you know, the, I'd like to just start with a real quick quick uh, update on the Unit 4 spent fuel pool, the one that they're uh, removing the spent fuel from. They're, they're almost halfway there, not quite halfway. And a good article from simplyinfo.org is, is certainly worth looking at. And what the, uh, what the outcome there is that uh, spent fuel processing in Fukushima has made some progress, but there's still a lot of work to be done, the higher risk work, which is being left for later. Remember we talked about the, lo the low-lying fruit first, and right. now the, the later stuff. Well, they're getting into that later stuff. And this is certainly, you know, it, it's, it's good that they're removing the fuel, but it's certainly now now is the nitty-gritty time. We're getting down to the, the, the hard stuff to remove. That's the stuff that's still that's been damaged by material and, 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 and debris falling on it and uh, damaged fuel and, you know how so that's that's going to be uh that's going to be slowing down now believe it or not you could actually slow down from how slow they were going with this one and uh the important takeaway from this is that uh the common spent fuel pool and you get the, the right figure here is 89.2 percent full remember that that unit had that's awfully full system. that's, that's awfully pretty full. full that yeah right exactly so what what need, what are you going to do with the with the rest of the fuel? You don't have room. You don't have room to offload spent. Fuel. Well, they never checkerboarded like it's a law here. They checkerboard the the fuel rod uh, cooling pool. They don't checkerboard in Japan, right? Uh, so far, they have not been doing that. That was a recommendation, no. or uh, <clears throat> they have not. Now here's right. here's the problem. They've been trying to make room in that common spent fuel pool by moving the oldest, the really old stuff that's been sitting there festering for you know, way over a decade or so to the dry uh, cask storage area. Well, that's a good idea. Yeah, well, it, and, and it needs to be done. They've got to make room for it because the newer, the fresher fuel has to sit in water, and the older stuff has to be moved into a dry cask. But the thing is, that's a very slow process of building, ordering. I mean, this stuff's not off-the-shelf items, the cask for that. And so yeah. that's that's going, to, that's going to be what we call a choke point or, uh, or the long pole in the tent that holds the show up. That's, that's going to be a uh, critical path item. Yeah, so the other I item is they have here this Institute Seeking Nuclear Fuel Debris Removal Ideas. And, of course, when you hear these stupid ideas they have, I'm going to just put this over right out. Now, the first thing is um, a colleague of mine, Dr. Um, the director of the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine, Dr. Ron Klaus, Glatz, uh, he um, told me about this product called Starlight that'll take temperature of 15 to 20,000 degrees. Uh, you can actually impregnate it with beads of depleted uranium, which blocks gamma rays and neutrons. <clears throat> and you can create uh, snappable panels, and they're almost like Lego blocks, but snappable panels that could be made in like a geodesic type of thing. So you could stick them inside and snap them together in that area of the uh, containment area. And you would block the neutrons, so it actually would make it more safe to run robots in, or even people. So um, there's doable things, but you don't want to put water in there, and you definitely don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to put any more water in these things; would leak like sieves. And they need to start doing other things too. I mean, they need to know where the corium is. They should be building a corium catcher underneath it by using um, drilling and then putting depleted uranium-lined containers underneath it to make a corium catcher. Uh, the idea of starlight and uh, assemblable, uh, if you want, almost like a Lego system of uh, assembling a radiation zone, protection zone 
is a good one. Your idea years ago, uh, a couple years ago, was the idea of lining the uh, containers with uh, depleted uranium, just like the shipping containers. You could make uh, travel passageways. You could make, you know, in other words, you could make a a zone where workers could come and go, and robots could get back and forth to the areas uh, without being blasted by gamma rays or uh, neutrons. Yeah, and so, that, that's uh, probably not off. That, that that may not even be off the table because now the real work. What's the real work? The real work is getting rid of the, the melted so, so, fuel. So, so, mean, so that's, that's what, what I think, and I think the other thing is they need to do is make a. Uh, a boronated crystalline sarcophagus of these areas. They should try to stop removing uh, radiation material like the corium underneath and just kind of stop the neutrons, get the water diverted. They've done a few good things, which is to pump the water above the uh, Fukushima plant. They want to encircle the plant and put the decise wall. I think it's smarter to put a, a place distant beyond Fukushima in the near waters there and actually have a liner then filter that water and then turn it into solid radioactive waste. So they could, they need to maybe do all these things, but whatever they're doing right now, they're proceeding at a glacial pace. Yeah, it, and, and so because there's a lot of, there really is a lot of uncharted territory, but in the end, TEPCO has actually opened up their their uh, resources, that is the world's resources, and they're asking for help. Like yeah. officials are urging engineers mm -hmm. to study new technology that can monitor fuel debris in a highly radioactive atmosphere and protect workers without the use of water. Now, that goes back to what you were saying. Uh, Unit 1 is going to be the subject of a probe that will um, uh, look or the leaks in the containment vessels. And it's, it's actually very uh, very important that they're admitting that the containment vessels are all breached, because I know that we looked at the data uh, like, yeah, right. you know, from, the, from the first week. I said, there's something wrong. Like unit two, you see how the pressure went up here, all of a sudden it suddenly went down. Yet the, 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 yeah, you know that they lost the, containment, you know, but they didn't even make it. the... And we, we nailed it. I mean, you know, basically. Yeah, um, in fact, I think I would say, I'm going to give you that credit, because I think you noticed right away that, hey, this anomaly is only seen when you lose containment. Um, when you hear, uh, again, this new director, Kazuhiro Suzuki, uh, I'm kind of pleased with him, at least opening up the ideas. We've talked over the last three years, and in this new ebook that's coming out, virtually most of the major issues that are need to be dealt with with Fukushima, we have a technical and a uh, nuclear engineering answer to the problems. We have a personal protection answer, and we have an answer to other plants that are in similar danger of not necessarily tsunamis but earthquakes because most of the reactors in the world are on coastal areas. The reactors along the coast of Europe, Great Britain, North America are all in danger of being hit by the Cumbra Viejo supervolcano tsunami because that has been slipping for 30 some years. When it goes, it'll be an 800 foot high wall. It'll travel one to 300 feet miles inland in North America, estimated to kill 85 to 115 million Americans and it will make all our radioactive nuclear reactors spew radiation, making Fukushima look like a garden party. But we're not downsizing them, we're not getting rid of them, they're not switching over to liquid natural gas. And we're not also <clears throat> talking to the public honestly about how we take big earthquakes in terms of small by almost like noise cancelling technology so we can take the future big one that could hit Fullerton, California or any other area like New Madrid and then release that energy in the rocks using uh, harmonic technology. We need to start looking at, look, all these tornadoes. I know from talking to some of my engineering friends, we could hit those with plasma cannons and, and unwind those air mass systems and plasma physics, and they wouldn't turn into ter tornadoes. They'd turn into little dust devils and do not, no damage at all. There's no excuse for us not applying our brains to solve this problem. We have better questions, and we have real proposed technology to solve it. We come back, we're going to talk about it specifically. Welcome back, and uh, this is pretty remarkable. Uh, we talked about specifically on the break the real issues here. Uh, we don't have any shortage of fuel. We stop all the stuff about fossil fuels, but we do have a problem with peak oxygen. And uh, there's a certain amount of stretch. If you put more CO2 in the atmosphere, higher parts per million, the plants will respond by turning that back, <clears throat> that CO2 into plant matter. It'll also generate oxygen, but there's limited capacity because we've been knocking down the forests in the Amazon rainforest and elsewhere around the world. We've been killing the benthic layer of the oceans, 
A good example is the Gulf of Mexico and the use of Corexit 9500, which killed a great deal of the ocean. So they have an invasion of Australian jellies, giant jellies that are very nasty, uh, caused by that. And I believe I'm the only one talking about the idea of peak oxygen. That's the real issue. Not peak fuel, peak oxygen, which means we need a nuclear fusion technology. We need safe technology that doesn't drain electropollution like solar, current solar or current wind technology. We need plasma fusion engines. We need other technologies like solar to hydrogen, where basically your solar cells, you bioengineer these little cells of, 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 of uh, we call the nucleoplasts of, of uh, phytoplankton and of plants. So then they don't generate sugars, they generate hydrogen. And that can then be concentrated in an adsorbing engine so you don't end up with an explosion because you don't have hydrogen like the Hindenburg. You have it adsorbed to an engine surface with a very large surface area. These are all possible. But the idea that we can just ignore the old nuclear technology and not move to fusion or safer technology, and by the way, most of these old, these even the newer ones, I don't think I consider very safe. So thorium, can-do reactors from Canada, pebble bed reactors, and they're a hell of a lot better because they're not going to go critical, but they're still, they have the problem with disposing of the radioisotopes. Um, at the very least, we need to get all the material off. I mean, even when they close a plant, if they find a lot of these plants not viable, uh, and they, they're going to have all the nuclear material sitting on site. Uh, most of them cooling pools are in these casks. So I, I think that we need to be proactive in terms of the way we handle these things rather than waiting until we, quote, a century disaster happens and then we end up with a good part of the North American continent uninhabitable, which is very possible, by the way. So um, my take on nuclear is move to safer nuclear technology, get the material off-site, move to nuclear fusion technology, uh, plasma and, and and from the solar system and, and cosmos, plasma from the from you know like nuclear fusion technology like the muon fusion engines developed in a company out of Vancouver. We need to start realizing that energy you cannot continue to use massive amounts of oxygen and then overload the CO2 cycle. And we're not talking about parts per million or global warming. We're just talking about the fact that as the oxygen level starts to drop because you overdraw from that reservoir. People won't be able to breathe unless they are in a, a city or are getting supplemental oxygen. That's not good. And then you start seeing the death of the biosphere, where you overload it to the point where plants can survive, but animals won't. And that's very real. What do you think, uh, Chris? Well, I think, uh, I think the new globalist guys don't care about that as much as uh, forcing us Did, to live in domed cities where they could control every aspect of your life and exactly which is part of the reason why they want this they want a vastly yeah. reduced population they want their dystopian nightmare once human beings to submit their gametes to reproduction if you're licensed that wild reproduction or human reproduction is going to be outlawed of course part of that is to poison our environment to the point where people can't reproduce or if they do they're going to have monsters um, because they don't want to fix Fukushima I really honestly believe that none of the parties involved whether it's Obama the IAEA, the NRC, or any other agencies wants to fix this because how can you and I, and we've put this together over three years, how can you and I sit together, contact other researchers, pull up the articles, come up with concrete ideas, valid ideas, challenging ideas, and questions that could solve these problems? Why? Why is nothing being done? Uh, well, I mean, they're, you they're can't put it on the balance sheet problem. either. You, you can't put this on the balance sheet. Uh, you know, the ebook should be ready by way very shortly. I, initially, I was going to make it just an, an article and expand it and expand it. So I'll make a summary article. A lot of it was your emails, Chris, and a lot of other questions. But we, I, we cover basically every area in the ebook from the what happened at Fukushima, what is still happening, and there's a lot of other books out. In fact, I have a book on Fukushima that was by some other authors, and I'm going to read through that. But <clears throat> I, <coughs> I already noticed. <coughs> I already noticed going through that book that the real issues, such as the faux um, Taurus, um, was not dealt with, where they weren't, they really didn't set up a system to deal with hydrogen venting from the containment area. That real issues of like no, reactor number one was already disabled and lost containment before even the tsunami arrived. I mean, there's a lot of things that are missed by so, a lot of so called experts, and these issues come up in other plants in other areas, like New Madrid fault system here in America. Diablo Canyon, uh, reactors in, uh, in Switzerland where all five reactors are sitting near fault lines. 
I don't understand why they don't just switch those over to liquid natural gas right away. They have to stop and say, oh, this is a five or ten year plan. How about a, you better do it now because if an earthquake strikes, your little country of Switzerland will be radioactive. Uh, what do you think of that? Well, hey, Dr. Bill, there was an excellent article that I didn't bring to your attention. I really should have, my fault, where it put a side-by-side analysis between the Amagawa power plant that was um, 60 kilometers even closer to the epicenter of the earthquake and had right. it, it was subject to even a higher uh, tsunami, and that was not run by TEPCO. It was run by the, the Tohoku uh, uh, Power Company, and right. they were more conservative. They, they had constructed their their seawalls much higher and so a lot of this a lot of this is to blame on on Tepco's original uh, well basically uh, a, a wish and a, and, a, and a hope instead of actual hope. Well, well, the structure was though the Tepco was an umbrella company and they were subcontracting to American companies to do all the pieces right. so it's American subcontractors that did the screw up because the parent companies that watched to keep a sharp pencil don't spend too much of our money and try to accomplish these and these goals. So typical would they basically give very tight parameters on what the contractor would do, and then the contractor wanted to keep the contract would basically do virtually nothing. And they're American going contractors, back to what, by the way. Well, going back to what you said about you, know, you can't put that on a balance sheet. The problem is they keep trying to force it onto a balance sheet, and this is the results you get. When you yeah, this is why yeah, you use a sharp, a sharp accounting pencil instead of an engineering yep. pencil. That That's the problem. Um, and this is only a warning sign because we're, we're bound to have a lot more earthquakes and volcanoes. The reason why those are increasing is we have approaching in our galaxy, in our solar system, a red dwarf star. It's in the outer Oort cloud. I don't know when it's going to get here, if it's this decade or next decade, but it's coming. Those hyper-elliptical comets that came in over the last few years, those are being pushed in by it. Uh, the magnetic field is 200 times stronger than our sun. It's going to cause major things if it had a CME even that distance of so 0.73 light years it will have a really bad effect. And 0.73 light years means it'll take nine months to arrive here, but if you see a big burst of light in the Oort cloud outside of our solar system, it means we're going to hit with a gravity wave and an EMP pulse and a, a coronal mass ejection that's far worse than the sun could ever generate. And people need to be aware of that. They, they don't think these things can happen. And these, these roving or trinary systems, like this, our solar system is a trinary star. Saturn is not a, is not a star. But Jupiter is, technically because it gives off more X-ray and infrared light than it receives. And we and most of the 73 to 76 percent of the stars in our galaxy, 200 billion stars plus, they have a two or three star system. It's very rare to see a star that just has one star. You know, a solar system has one star. It's relatively a minority. And what happens is these red dwarfs last a very long time. Our sun will burn out in 10 billion years. You can have red dwarfs because of the way they're structured, and they're usually one-tenth to 40% the mass of our current sun. They can last up to 100 trillion with a T years. Not 10 billion years, 100 trillion years. That's a lot longer. Okay? Just think of it. That means they can last, I think it's, what is it, 10? They can last 100 trillion, 100 trillion years is about 10,000 times longer than our sun. And they can also, when the sun burns out, if there's a major explosion, they can be ejected and be roving across the solar system and galaxy. <coughs> and other than magnetars, which are a giant magnetic star, these are the most metabolic, meta, magnetically active uh, stars in the galaxy in there. Very, very, uh, a lot of them. There's an awful lot of them. The problem is our nuclear system can't withstand this. We cannot produce energy in the future that burns up oxygen. We need to make sure that our grid is decentralized so it can survive CMEs or cyber terrorism. Nothing that we should do is being done. Nothing. No. Don't even get me started on the grid right now. It's too late. Yeah, the grid is a, 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 a Haitian tar paper shack. It would be more engineeringly advanced.